So my students, my seniors, um, Caitlin in particular is the most vocal about this. Um, I always make these history videos and my seniors especially have said that I should do some more interesting videos as in like room tours, outfits of the day, you know, that kind of thing, which is the stuff that they watch on YouTube. Um, and I am all for it. I'm all about adapting and, you know, doing what you guys want me to do. And if it, it interests you, if it makes you excited for history, then yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, so first, my outfit. Can I stand? I don't know. Ooh. Oh, it is. By the way, I turned the air off. It is probably 95 degrees in this classroom. So if I'm sweating, um, that's why. It's because it's 95 degrees in my hair. Ooh. My outfit is just this. Um, it's not this is not vintage at all this is just a normal uh mod cloth i just thought it went with the hat so this hat i'm gonna move my hair this hat is actually from the 1920s so it's an original 1920s straw hat that i got this adorable vintage shop that i love in lambertville um so that's it um guys would have worn these and uh my dad actually told me that my grandfather wore this. My grandfather was born in 1907, so he was definitely alive for the Roaring Twenties. It's senior, junior and senior orientation today. Thought I'd wear an outfit representing my favorite decade that they're gonna learn about this year, and that's the 20s. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna take you around the room and show you some of the stuff that I have, and if there's anything interesting that I decide I wanna um, sit down and show you, then, then I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so here you go. Over here, it's just the bookshelf. Got some cute things. I got this in Scotland. We learn about Salvador Dali, so of course I have this melting clock over here. Um, these little guys I got in Okinawa, Japan, and this book about, it's well, it has poems from World War One. I. I got that actually in Ypres, Belgium. And I got this big pencil over here from Poland, the Wolf Slayer, Hitler's headquarters over in Poland, and that was really nice. They didn't have souvenirs, so I just got a big pencil because that's the kind of stuff they have in Poland. If you look over here, this is actually something that one of my students made for me, Christina. She made it, uh, oh my gosh, she graduated eighth grade in 2015, so this is going to be going on four years ago. Um, that she that she made this for me. So when she graduated when I taught eighth grade at my old school She cut out like she spent so much time cutting out all of these words that were either inside jokes or things that Reminded her of me and I think it's really cute. So we have that there um, I did take a seminar in Oxford So I have that little Oxford book and I have these guys from a student also who I had um, I knew her since she was in sixth grade, and she's in college now, so yeah, I've got those from Francine. All right, so got some books, got some DVDs, got a little Ariel, because I'm obsessed. Um, Treasure Troll from when I was a kid. Oh, these are some of my old students. They gave me this box, and I actually put all my mementos, so any cards, any gifts, letters that any students give me, I put inside there, but I've got those kids. So yes, I used to teach middle school. I found this at Hobby Lobby. It's just a list of cities and then randomly you got Puerto Rico and the Bahamas. I color in the ones that I've been to, I color them red. So as I go to different places, I take it out of the frame and I color it red. It's, not, it's a very random list of cities. I made this coat slash bag hanger and I bought a piece of wood, I painted it. I bought little knobs and I just kind of put them on. Each one of the knobs symbolizes something uh, of me. I have this from Wyoming. I got this in Jackson and I got this little coup or wee coup um, in Scotland this summer when I took the seminar at the University of Edinburgh. Here's my desk. Got a lot of hand sanitizer. So got a lot of kids. Another little sheep, handmade sheep thing from Scotland. All right, so the desk is pretty normal. Another gift from a couple students of mine right here. And yeah, that was my USC graduation. All right, so this is the room. This is an overview of the room. I have this desk from the late 1800s, so 
um, 19th century desk that I bought from a woman in the Atlantic Highlands. I had to actually go over there and pick it up. And I got this on Etsy a few years back. Um, a little nipper over here. I refurbished this chair. So it was actually my grandmother's chair from probably, I want to say the 30s or 40s, but um, I just painted it and I reupholstered the seat and I added this detail over there on the back. I have my diplomas. I really love World War II posters. So this is an authentic World War II poster. Um, it's one of my favorites. I just love the way he looks. Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, battling it out by the light switch, arguing over their AC and DC power, War of the Currents. I drew these about three years ago, um, actually over three years ago. So this is my fourth year at this high school. And um, I was nervous because when I drew them, I'm like, okay, well, these will last like a year because you know, the kids are gonna mess it up or whatever. But I think it's a testament to the students that I have and how they respect absolutely every single thing in this classroom. They don't touch anything. They don't mess with anything. That's my least favorite is <laughs> my showing of Martin Luther King. Um, the kids make fun of it all the time and they ref I was gonna erase it and they actually like, cause I did this one in about 10 minutes. It was the first day of school and I didn't have time to finish the last one. Um, so I did him really, really fast. And I was not proud of it. I was gonna erase it and fix it and like do another one. And the kids absolutely refused. They're like, you cannot erase that because he's amazing. Cause they just think he looks really funny. So he's still up there, but I do like the first four. I spent a lot more time on them. The third one was actually done by my friend Kelly. Um, she drew that for me. I had these frames up here. They actually just broke and shattered. So that's sad, but I had them up on the closet. I have some old students. These are Instagram pictures that I had framed. Um, I put it up there because I, you know, I miss them a lot. I love everybody on there, but everyone on there's graduated already. Oh my God, it's so sad. This is another World War II poster that I have um, in my collection. And I have this one over here. I really liked this one just because he reminds me of Gene Kelly. Tell me he does not remind you of Gene Kelly. Look at that. That's an awesome poster. All of these are authentic. I get them from, because everyone always asks me, I get my stuff from paper shows. Um, I get my stuff from flea markets and state sales, whatever. I have an antique telephone back here. Kids have actually wrecked it. It's, you know, it used to ring, um, but it does not ring anymore. So there's the telephone. And we've got John Locke, who is absolutely one of my favorites, and cleaning supplies back over there. Most of the stuff that I use all the time is out here. In here, I'll show you what's inside of these drawers. I have a lot of things that I've just collected over the years. Books, I have books. This one right here is my absolute favorite. I'll show it to you. Awesome. All right, so we have tons of fun stuff. Whenever we're doing certain chapters, you know, I just like pull things out. I actually really love old photographs. I think that there's something beautiful about preserving a photograph um someone that you know maybe they don't have any family left which is why i was able to find this at a flea market um someone who has kind of been lost over the years i just i believe that like every single life and every person that existed is just important and significant and there is a reason for them being here um and i would hope my students think the same so whenever i do come across old photographs and they don't have a home i save them because i you know, I, I feel like they should be on display. I found th these two in an attic. I was actually doing an estate sale um, and the last living family member passed away. And I saved the photographs from the attic that I found because I felt like, okay, they don't have any more living family members. Let me, you know, just preserve their pictures. I do like daguerreotypes because I do love the reflective mirror. So like this guy, super cool. Um, I have some more back there, this old woman. Oh my gosh, can you see? Oh, it's so hard to see because of the reflective glass, but she's really awesome. And this lady, I don't know. I just feel like, oh God, all right, there we go. <laughs> I feel like it's just, it's cool. It's cool to hold on to these things. This guy is pretty awesome. I do, the backing did come off. This guy right here, is a Civil War amputee. 
Um, so you can see that his arm was actually amputated uh, during the Civil War, and I have his photo. have no idea who he is. I don't know anything about him, but I know that he was a Civil War veteran, and that's something that, you know, I respect, and I just have his picture on display right over there, along with these cameras, stereoscope. I also like old autograph books. So these are autograph books from the 1800s. I love to read little notes from people. Of course, you got the Edison phonograph cylinders, things like that. Some old postcards, a little, a little something over there. And this NBC thing, you're probably like, what is that? I actually got that at an estate sale for the woman who played, I, her name is escaping me, forgive me. The woman who played Bill Cosby's mother on the Cosby show, she passed away and they had an estate sale at her house, which was not too far from where I live. It was only like a few minutes from where I live. And this was a gift to everybody who had a show on NBC. They got it one year. Um, so this was the gift that she got from NBC. And um, I bought it, <laughs> so I have it in my classroom. So yeah, that belonged to the mother on the Cosby show. I know Bill Cosby, I'm not really a fan of um, anymore, but that was, I think, a piece of history. So I have that there. Uh, got this cape in Cape May, Victorian cape, pretty cool. Got some stuff back here too. Everything's pretty organized. I have a lot of papers and stereoscope cards, another World War II poster that I have over here. And I got this fallout shelter sign. I have memories of being in grammar school and having this all over the grammar school because the grammar school was older. It was built, I think it was built in the 1940s. So uh, yeah, so this just reminds me of it. All right, so there's the school outside. I have some of my old students in here. It's got the US, got some photos of class and things like that and all the kids know history. Mount Fuji tissue box. Um, I found these things, well, I just bought these random things at a flea market and then I made a little sculpture there. Yas. Oh, I miss you guys so much. Oh okay. I mean, that's pretty much the room itself. Yeah, all right kids. I'm gonna show you some specifics. We're gonna get back there and look at some things. Oh my God, my hair. I had the cutest little fish tails and they're just a mess because it's so hot and humid and I can't even keep up. So I did take off the hat because my hair is sweating. Um, but what I did was I went back, wait, wait. Okay, right there. I took one of the drawers out um, because I thought it would be cool to kind of go through some of this stuff. It's not like the coolest stuff because obviously I have World War II, well not obviously if you're not one of my students, but I have World War II newspapers, um, you know, highlighting the end of the war in both Japan and Europe. I have JFK's assassination. I have very, uh, FDR's death. I have a lot of newspapers from very big moments. So I'm not really gonna show those um, because that's kind of a given. Um, but this is the collection, like I have a little collection in this drawer of things that I found over the years and they're a little more um, subtle. And I like that. Something that I do in my classes is I don't necessarily, um, you know, wanna focus just on the main events. I just, I really, I like people and I, I like everyday people and as I said when I was showing um, the photographs and why I collect old photographs is because I feel like every person matters and if I can tell their story in any way too, then you know I'm gonna do it. Um, so I have the first thing I'm gonna show you, this right here um, is a document from the 18, I forget the exact date, it's 1850, okay. So it's from 1850 and I'm gonna take it out here. Um, and the cool thing about this is that it's something that was just written by someone and it's, it's not a, an official document or anything. It's not, it's just like scribbles from some guy. And I love what he wrote. So this is by Peter. It just says by Peter. Um, okay. So it says here, so it says happiness. And I think that this resonates even today. It is the great desire of all mankind to be happy. The king upon the throne and the humble peasant who toils for his daily bread, the president in the chair of state 
and the humblest citizen who helps the, to place him there. The millionaire and the beggar all desire happiness. And he just kind of goes on about like what makes somebody truly happy. And that is something like I read this. So I got this for like, I want to say I, I got it at a paper show. It was like five bucks or something. Um, but I just thought, first of all, I love the penmanship, but just the content content's awesome and if you read the whole thing it's just it's amazing and it just it's something that resonates today it's the exact same like I mean people didn't don't change people don't change throughout time we're all the same um the oldest thing that I have in the classroom are actually these pages from illuminated manuscripts so this one is from 1300 you can see it there okay so that's from 1300 this one is from oh gosh what year is this it's like 1450 so this is from the year 1450. Oh my gosh, I love, love illuminated manuscripts. I took this, I studied abroad in Paris, and when I did, we actually got to go to the Louvre and hold illuminated manuscripts from 1200s, 1300s, and you know, flip through the pages, and like that just got my upset, like I just became obsessed with them. Um, so here, this is from 1507. I use this to show the students the transition from, obviously prior, you know, pre-printing press, where you had uh, literate monks that would write, and then to printing press, where it's printed. So those are really awesome. I found those at a paper show, oh my gosh. Once again, everything in the classroom is authentic. I don't have any reproductions, um, so it's just all real. These are really cool. Oh my gosh, this is like so cool. These are really cool because it kind of reminds me of now and how you, know, you take silly pictures and stuff. And this little kid, oh God, can you see this? All right, here we go. How cute with the phone. I can just, oh my gosh, adorable. I love that kid. And then here, like this girl's being silly, like she's dressing up with different hats. But look how she's laughing and like, oh my gosh. So cute. And then this is another, oh my gosh, like Victorian. Is this Victorian or Edwardian? Probably Edwardian. All right, so here we go. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Listen, I'm just, I'm rambling. Look how she's, oh my gosh, I love her smile. She's like, mm, okay, something I would do. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's just funny because like, I forgot that I had these. So like, I just have this drawer over there. I, you know, have these, uh, these things and I do bring them out for the kids, but not all the time. So like this guy too. Oh my God, can you see him? Like a little tiny hat. Like who does that? Oh my gosh. Amazing. Love those, love those, love those. All right, so I'm looking at some of these here. These are tickets. There's like tickets. I like schools. Um, you know, not particularly old or anything. Just from 1939, so it's not super old. Um, oh, this is perfect for the progressive era. Okay, well, for the progressive era, I love to show all of the pre-Food and Drug Act paraphernalia. I love to show the kids these and it just says like everything that, you know, these drugs are gonna cure and obviously they're, they don't cure any of that stuff. So it's so awesome. We love to read these labels. Here, oh my gosh, so cute. So I have a bunch of these, I collect these. Um, again, really good for when you're doing the progressive era, I love to show them. This is, I mean, this is nothing else, it's just fun. It says fortune teller. And then if you look at it backwards, you could actually see the, the words. You put it in, you would put it in the mirror and it would tell your fortune. Okay, oh my gosh, look at this, looking at the stuff. All right, so this is, um, I have a lot of German stuff, so I'm like, you know, I have, I have this postcard from the 1936 Berlin Olympics, which we cover senior year for seniors, US2. Um, this is from when Hitler came to power, this postcard. I'm very fascinated by 
Hitler's rise to power, as I think the entire world is. I have these postcards. They're, uh, they're more like little, eh, little pamphlet things. And um, we talk a lot about propaganda, and we talk a lot about, you know, the Hitler's rise to power and how he was able to do it. But again, we just kind of show, it's like, look, like this is what's being shown to the people. Like, oh my God, he's hugging a little girl. He's so wonderful. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that we, that we cover in class. Obviously, he is a complete psychopath, but um, it's just how the public was able to be convinced of to how the public was able to be you know convinced of you know following him now this is a world war one german postcard i got them all from the same place really it was like army songbook that's cool more of these uh More of these. I love these so much. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, they're perfect for the progressive era. They're so awesome. And I had this all organized. And now I'm like taking them out. What am I doing? This was like so nice. And now I'm like, God, guys. I'm doing this because you want me to. Right. These are. German marks, oh my gosh. So German marks, uh, we are going to be seeing these when we talk about the depression in Europe. It's always, you know, post-World War I. Um, so we have lots of German marks because who doesn't have a lot of German marks? Everyone's got them. There's trillions of them all over the place. Oh my God. All right, here. And, you know, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else worth showing. Um, just a lot of funky stuff. A little funky stuff in here. This little thing here. I'm very into World War II, so my grandfather is, uh, fought in World War II, so I am, I love it. I think a lot of people are interested in World War II, you know, in general, but for me it just holds this like personal family history, so yeah. I have this over here, Britain carries on. Oh my God, I have so much stuff. Like, what am I doing? I'm a hoarder. Guys, I hoard like, I hoard paper. All right. Uh, da -da -da. Wonderful, okay. Oh, this stuff's cool. Okay. Um, I really like these. These are just, something I found, which was like, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. I found these at a paper show in Pennsylvania and um, Allentown, the Allentown paper show. That's where it's at, oh my God. I mean, everyone there is like 60 years older than me, but it's totally fine. Okay, that's a lie. 40 years older than me and 30 years older than me. Um, I found these little, uh, I guess they're luggage tags. Not luggage tag, but you put them on the suitcases. Okay, you put them on the suitcases. And the cool thing is they're very old, but they're hotels I've actually stayed at. So that excited me. I was like, oh my God, I've stayed at this hotel. So I've got from the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo. So I've got a few of those from the Imperial Hotel, which, oh my gosh, I love it. Oh, that was such a great experience staying at the Imperial Hotel. Um, so if you don't know, the Imperial Hotel was actually designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, and I, the original was since taken down. However, they do have a part of the facade on the inside and, um, the Imperial Hotel, like so many people stayed there, like everyone from like Marilyn Monroe. I mean, anybody who was anybody back in the day stayed at the Imperial Hotel and it's still there. It's again, not the original, but it's awesome. And I had these little tickets from the Imperial Hotel. Um, and I was just so happy to find these because I loved, I loved my time in Japan. And I, oh my God, I love them. So I got those in, again, got them in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I went to Kamakura. I did not stay at this hotel, but I went to Kamakura. So I, I picked this up because I'm obsessed with Japan. And um, I did a whole trip to Okinawa and then went to uh, the mainland, went to Hiroshima, et cetera, et cetera. So that was really cool. And then also I stayed at the Dolder Grand when I went to Zurich 
and I found this one and I just thought that is so cool. I love, oh my gosh, Google the Dolger Grands. Your life will never be the same. Um, I think Michael Jackson stayed there and and it's just, it's it was a, just a really cool hotel. I don't know why I'm naming celebrities because I don't particularly care if the celebrity stayed there. I care how I'm treated when I'm there and I was treated very well at the Dolger Grand and at the Imperial Hotel. Actually like in the Imperial Hotel when you go to the elevators, the, um, they have people standing there that bow as you get in the elevator. They get it for you and then they bow as the elevator's closing the doors and it's just so, so nice. I never felt so special. No one's ever made me feel that special. What else do I have in this drawer? This is like, you remember Barney? I was too old for Barney because it came out when I was like already an older kid, but then I had friends who had siblings and they would watch it. But anyway, they had like the Barney bag, like see what we can make today. Like, oh, we're gonna find, like it just had everything in there. That's what I feel about this drawer. Like I feel like everything is in this drawer. Okay. Um, oh, postcards. Ah! Oh, I love these. Oh my gosh, I have so many. <gasps> oh my God, look at this. Look, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I do have, you know, from the area, I try to get postcards like this is from Rutherford. Um, I have a lot of these, like these are just so cool. Such like pieces of history, man, I tell you. This is um, Ipris. I visited Ipris a few years ago and amazing, one of my favorite places in the whole entire world. Oh my gosh, look at this stuff. I'm hoping that I could fix this so that it switches. Do you know how to do that? Cause I, I, don't, I don't know how to do that. Roselle. And again, I have another one from Rutherford, but I love to read what people write, you know? Um, that's something that is really, really cool to me. It's really special for me to be able to like find something that somebody wrote so long ago and then just read it and ah, I don't know, I don't know. It just, it makes me feel like I connect to someone that's no longer here that I never knew. But once again, it just shows me how people are the same throughout history. So technology changes and the world changes, but the basic fundamentals of you know, who we are as people, as human beings, that doesn't change, it's the same, you know, whether it's today or if it was thousands of years ago. So I think that's why I like to collect these things, especially letters and postcards and autograph books, um, anything that has, and photographs, anything that has that connection to personal human history. And one more quick thing. Okay, so I was putting the papers back and then I'm like, oh wait, I just wanna show this. This is my favorite book. Got this at a flea market a few years ago. Oh, it must have been like nine years ago now. It was before, it was like right when I was starting teaching. Um, so I, this is my ninth year as a teacher. Um, and I, I got this book and it's so awesome. It's from 1758 and it is a book that it's a, geo, it's like a geography book from England. But the cool thing is that it actually has the colonies and it and it also has a lot of words in here so i mean there's a lot of things that the author thomas salmon's writing that is so enlightened like it's just it's completely enlightenment inspired and i saw this book and i'm like oh my gosh i have to have it but i thought of course it's going to be more expensive since it's complete it's in perfect shape it's not in perfect shape let's be real but it is it's in pretty good shape to me um and it's from 1754 so i had told the guy what i wanted to do with it. oh i'm a teacher and like oh my god i can use it for the enlightenment and he actually gave it to me for 25 bucks he was just like, listen, I want you to have it. I want it to be in your classroom forever, so just take it. And he's like, my job when I you know, collect these things is to make sure it goes to the right person. So I feel like you're the right person to have this book. And that's kind of how I feel when I get things. Um, I'm not really thinking of it in a materialistic point of view. I'm not thinking of it as like, this is mine. I see it as I am a historian. I am someone that is going to preserve this for my lifetime until the next person that gets to preserve it. So it's just mine temporarily. I'm babysitting it um, just as for the last like 300 years, you know, somebody has been babysitting this book. You know, you just, it passes along from generation to generation. And that's why I, that's why I get stuff. That's why I get the things that I get. One last thing that I'm going to show you that I found in my, ah! 
Okay, so I found this in the box. It's the last thing. Dude, I could do videos like this where I just show you things that I find in my classroom. I, I don't know. This video is a room tour. I got sidetracked and started like, you know, exploring my junk. Um, but I think that I could just, I could do videos on this. So if kids, if you want to see more stuff on like what I actually have in the classroom, because again, when you do your gallery walks and when you use these primary source documents, I don't show you everything. I only hand pick like a couple things for every chapter. Um, but so much of this stuff is really cool if you're interested, um, which you better be. Um, so I found this letter here. It's from 1947, it's American Red Cross. So um, this person is overseas and they're helping with the post-war recovery and they're writing to their mom and this is Charles. So, so his name is Charles and he's writing to his mother and it's March 2nd, 1947. And he just says, well, or dear mother, we finally closed out the hospital. I spent a week in a camp just outside of Paris. We had to sleep in the old POW stockade. No lights, no heat, no water or toilet facilities, but we made it. Um, so I can just, oh yeah, that sounds like it's terrible. But he's just talking about his time over there. We don't do a thing, but sit around and let the Germans do all the work. <laughs> I wish you'd get the address from Aunt Anna. The handwriting's not that neat, usually it is. Uh, at one of her relatives in Hamburg so I can write to them and see if they still live in the same place. Hamburg is in the British occupation zone so I have to write there first to see if they have a place for me to stay. Yeah, I mean, like this is just a really cool thing. It's a really cool piece of history. So those are some of the little things that I think I never really take out that I don't ever really show in class. Um, so thought I'd just post them up on here. Uh, if you want me to do more of this, if you want me to show more of the collection, then I would be more than happy to do that when it's not so hot. Oh my gosh. That's it. That was the room tour. That was a look at some of the little artifacts, the lesser known artifacts that I have here. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, guys, we're in for a heck of a year. I'm so excited. All right, I'll see ya. Bye.